him say he was leaving today. I saw him stay. He's not leaving today. Pack your bags and your stuff, 'cause I'm sick of the games. You're moving today. This living in fear has me so confused. I don't need the stress. So I wanted to talk with you about uh, the turn of the screw. Yeah. Um, you did a writing workshop, and how did you use the turn of the screw as an inspiration for this writing workshop? Well, I think the turn of the screw is one of those stories that kind of changed the the, the horror genre. Mm -hmm. You know, it was suddenly like, can the kids see the ghost? Can they not? You know, is is the 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 nanny who's looking after them there? Is she going crazy? So it was one of those stories that has inspired a lot of other ghost stories, other other films as well. And of course, Netflix has got you know uh, the haunting of Bly Manor, mm -hmm. which is also an adaptation of Turn of the Screw. So I just wanted us to to look at horror stories and talk mm -hmm. about what actually makes good horror. What's horrifying about mm -hmm. it? And And once we had started kind of dissecting the things that make you scared, then we moved on and we kind of used uh, Bly Manor mm -hmm. as, as a blueprint for a house in the story. Mm -hmm. So did, you, did it create some challenges uh, in the creation of this short, uh, short story? I think the challenge is the turn of the screw has been around for so long and everybody's tried their version mm -hmm. of it. You know, it's like, oh, there must be a twist. And so we avoided that altogether with our story by it being told from the perspective of, of the ghost. Mm -hmm. You know, the challenge is also it's on Netflix right now. So people are, are familiar with the story. So how do you make it different? Mm -hmm. And we decided it would be from... Uh, from the perspective of a ghost that is haunting a mansion like Bly Manor. Yeah. So that's why you wanted to make it something different from the original uh, Turn of the Screw. Yeah. Yeah. Since I know how the workshop uh, work because I was in them, maybe you could go explain to Morgan how they, they worked? Yeah, sure. I'm definitely, we're going to talk about the workshops. Yeah. Thank you. See you later. Hey again. Hey. So I heard during the workshops that you used some quotes. I did. And uh, can you read out loud this one and tell us why you picked this particular one? Um, it's a quote from Peter Pan. It says, all children except one grow up. Yeah, so why did you pick this one in particular? Well, for me, it was important first to get the students to, you know, get used to using their imagination on the spot. So I think I gave them like 10 minutes. I said, this is an opening line. Uh, everybody used this line. And I was trying to illustrate that nobody will write the same story. They're all very different. And some people, of course, made it a horror story. Some made it a love story. I just want, needed to kickstart the imagination. I guess that's why I also use this one from Matilda. It's a funny thing about mothers and fathers. So I just wanted to kickstart the imagination and get us going. That was kind of a guide for yeah. the people. Okay, um, also, uh, why did you, how this uh, particular exercise and the other exercises you gave to the students during the workshops uh, helped you and the students to um, get closer to the turn of the screw and uh, 
uh, help you to, f to take decisions about your way of rewriting the story of the turn of the screw? Well, I think it helped me understand where people's strengths were so that when it was time to kind of allocate different parts of the story, I knew who would be the strongest when it came to like writing horrific things, writing light things. And mm -hmm. for them, they had already sort of come out of their shell. You know, they weren't so shy anymore because they were very, very shy in the beginning. Yeah. And by that point, they'd already written ridiculous, funny, scary and sad stories in front of each other. So by the time I gave them the turn of the screw to read, I knew that when they came back, we'd be able to work on a story together. OK, and why did you choose with the student uh, to uh, distancing yourself from uh, the original turn of the screw story? I think at this point it was very clear that it's been adapted so many times, even the opera itself, mm -hmm. you know, and I thought instead of rehashing the same story, how can we make it different, you know, mm -hmm. so they thought, okay, first person narrative and to have the actual ghost you know, tell the story. And I thought that's, that's a nice way for, for a horror story to unfold, you know, yeah. where the ghost doesn't know that they are haunting the place and mm -hmm. causing anxiety. And it was still based on the blueprint of Bly Manor and kind of having children in a house, moving into a house that's haunted. Okay. Um, how were organized uh, the workshops? Because they were organized on teams for obvious reasons. So how was... Um, organized this session with the student, how did you manage to adapt your uh, way of teaching to them the process of writing through teams? Well, you know, initially I think we had one session together before then we couldn't, we couldn't meet anymore. Mm -hmm. And then they were all shy because people were looking at them, oh, yeah. so shy, I don't know what to do. But on teams, nobody had to switch their camera on if they didn't want to, and they were they were reading and creating from the comfort of their own home, mm -hmm. but knowing that they've got the support of the group and guidance from me. Mm -hmm. So initially it was tough because you can't look across the room and say, hey, you, what are you thinking? Yeah. You know, so it was different, but I think it was good for them mm -hmm. because they, they could be less shy from home. Yeah, that was a good way for them to express themselves. Mm. OK, thank you. Thank you. So we are now in the Oriental Bar. Mm -hmm. It's like a very inspiring place in the opera. You can see a lot of theatre props. Yeah. And I wanted to talk with you maybe more intimately about your relationship to culture. So what is your relationship with opera, for instance, in your own home country? Well, in, in South Africa, when I think about culture, I think it's always all around us. So. There, there's theatre shows that are constantly on and we've kind of started merging things like having poetry in mm -hmm. theatre, you know, having uh, musicians perform in theatre, especially when um, the, the lockdown happened, mm -hmm. you know, the first lockdown, a lot of musicians thought, well, these are places that are standing so they can record it and stream their music live. Mm -hmm. So in terms of culture, I feel like I'm always involved with it in more ways than one. Yeah. And in France, did you see a different approach to culture? Did you feel it was different from the approach in South Africa? Well, I will say since, you know, I was here for maybe like, I don't know, a few days and then the, the confinement happened. So I haven't seen much of the culture. I will say here though, that culture and everyday life here are kind of very separate. Mm -hmm. Whereas in South Africa, it's constantly around us. It's, it's kind of who we are as a people. Whereas here it's like, well, you go to the opera, you know, or you go to a comedy show. Um, it's, it's kind of like very different and very separate, separate from everyday yeah. life, yeah. yeah. Okay, so maybe to talk a bit more about Nancy, we could ask Morgan, who knows a bit more about this. Yeah, she's enjoying the costumes. Yeah, I was imagining <laughs> myself in a show. <laughs> so, uh, did you enjoy your stay here in Nancy, um, is, despite all the restrictions we had because of the COVID? What, is, what are your feelings uh, towards this experience in France, and particularly in Nancy? 
Well, you know, by the time I arrived in October, the whole world was kind of in some kind of lockdown and, you know, all of these precautionary measures. So I, I flew with, the mic, with, my, with my mask on the whole time. I took the train with my mask on. So it was yeah. nearly 23 hours of travel with the mask on. Mm. And that kind of let me know that my stay will be different. It won't be what I expected it to yeah. be. So I kind of you know, had to talk myself down from don't be sad that you weren't able to do this and that. And that helped me get to know Nancy better because I spend so much time here. Mm -hmm. So I take a lot of walks, um, you know, I have favorite shops that I go to. People know me in my in my little supermarket at the little wine shop, you know, mm -hmm. in different places. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of like I moved to Nancy for four months and I had a really nice, very small life. Yeah. And do you think this particular experience uh, changed your way of creating uh, in many ways? Um, th does it have an impact on your creating process in a way? See, so when I was home, I always worked from home, right? Mm -hmm. And I took for granted the fact that I could just have two days of meetings in town and see other people. So I always thought of writing as a lonely process, but having it happen during a pandemic and I'm in a foreign country and I, I can't just go, oh, I'm going to go meet my friend at the park mm -hmm. for a walk. You know, it's definitely impacted my writing in that it's become even more solitary. I'm now very, very, very aware of the fact that oh, I'm waking up and I'm writing and this is the story. So I guess maybe the quiet in my mind and the quiet around me mm -hmm. has been good for the process. Okay, thank you for your answers. Thank you.